Hey guys, we're out here on Lake Erie, pulling some cranks. Uh, got a nice eater here. We'll see what the day brings. Sure, it feels like a decent eater. Um, this rod or this setup here, what I was doing, uh, I was running about 2.2 miles an hour uh, and setting the back the baits back about 80 foot. Um, it's really easy bite out here for eaters. Uh, we're actually pre fishing for a tournament, looking for bigger fish, um, but it feels like here we got you know, a nice eater. Uh, the key to reeling in these fish is just a nice, easy, slow, consistent reel. We don't want to be um, Bobbing that rod up and down, you just want a nice, consistent, slow reel. I'm gonna grab this fish, it's pretty bad. It's a football. I can see this thing. Little fatty. Almost looks like a pre-spawn female. You know, one thing that uh, us as anglers I've really had to deal with within just the last year is rising water levels on the Great Lakes. Uh, right now, the Great Lakes are the highest they've ever been. They're all-time highs. And it's really changed pretty much every body of water that I've been to in the last few years. You know, Green Bay is a great example. You know, the fish aren't where they normally are. Uh, and we're starting to see that with Lake Erie this year. You know, we, uh, we're learning a lot of stuff that we've never seen before out here. You know, a lot of times these fish this time of year, their migrational patterns or migrational routes, um, their, hab you know, their habitats that they're hanging out in is that deep water. And a lot of times they're, you know, more towards bottom, we're snap waiting, you know, getting leaded line, all sorts of stuff to get our baits down deep. And, you know, what we really found this week is these fish are a lot higher. Um, you know, and they're, they're more on those shoreline breaks. They're, u they're utilizing different fish highways, as I call them. So, you know, that's one thing we've really had to do is a lot of driving, a lot of fishing, and a lot of trusting your electronics uh, and really find where these fish are hanging out at. There's, yeah, I think we got pretty solid fish here. Though. I got one here. Double. Double. This one's only like, only like 30 back, Jake. Okay. Wow, gotta, that's a nice fish. We gotta go in here. Yeah. Point. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, we got a good one here. Not an absolute eerie giant, but I'll tell you what, if we get this small in the tournament, we'll be real happy with this. The reason why I'm handling this fish is because we don't want people to see it. I'll tell you what guys, running this ascending on these bigger fish, um, I absolutely love it. You get those big head shakes because these rods um, are just absolutely built to handle those giant head shakes for this fish. Basically what we're doing right now is we're, we got away from the crowd and we are working uh, shoreline breaks. These 
fish are, these fish are being a little different than normal. Jake, you want to grab that other fish that we got there? The fish is still on there. Basically what we're doing is we're running these shoreline breaks. And these fish are just on their migrational routes. They're heading back out east. They spawned out in the western basin. They did their thing. Now they're starting to put the feed bag on. This one's skinny. That one's a little bit thicker. Yeah, it's still a little skinny. But, but they're running these little fish highways, and that's pretty much what this is, this little transitional line. They're running really high. We're in shallow water, shallower than normal, um, midday. But, I mean, these fish are just chowing on perch, white perch, white bass, young in the ear white bass, just a little bit of everything. So they're trying to eat as much as they can. It's a skinny little girl, but we'd use her tomorrow. Hey guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about the baits we're on this week on Lake Erie. Um, there's three prim primary baits that we're running, and that is the Flicker Minnow, the Bandit, and Reef Runner 800s. Uh, reason being is that matches the forage out here in Lake Erie very well. Um, so one thing we're doing uh, is on those bright sunny days, we're really liking those chrome baits. And a lot of times with those chrome baits, we run just a little bit higher, so we're getting a flash and getting that contrast. Um, a great one out here right now. Um, for us has been the blue chrome, so we're running that actually really high, something 20, uh, 20 foot back, 30 foot back. Um, so maybe we're getting 15, 12, 15 foot out of that bait really high. Um, that's been working really well for us. Um, when it starts getting a little bit darker, uh, we're switching to a darker bait, and so that's going to be putting a contrast out there as well. So um, this bear here, uh, Purple Demon, has been really good for us when the dark contrast. Um, and then some other bait selections run, uh, will come in shallower or closer inland. We're running kind of a brighter green, more of a natural perch. Uh, so the main forage in Lake Erie is uh, yellow perch, white perch, and white bass uh, with a little bit of shad mixed in. Um, so we're coming in closer, we're really trying to mimic that yellow perch. We're getting kind of those natural colors. Um, as we're moving further out, uh, we're switching to some of those other uh, basin type uh, bait. Some of the other things we're doing out here to uh, get some reaction bites is uh, we're putting in some S-turns. So if things slow down a little bit, uh, we're not seeing as many bites as, we're, as we were, we're switching things up. We'll go ahead and go do an S-turn, uh, see if we can get a reaction bite. Um, you know, some of the times we're getting bites as slow as a mile and a half an hour. Um, if the fish slow down and we're not getting what uh, getting as many bites as before, sometimes we're picking up, we're moving up to 2.2, 2.5. Um, and maybe those inactive fish, we're just getting a, a quick strike from them. Uh, maybe they're not in full meat, uh, feeding mode, um, but you know we'll speed up that bait and uh, they'll come by faster and they'll take a snap at the bait. Um, just some other techniques we're using out here to, to pick up some bigger fish. You see that one? No. You jumped up for the rod and I was like, I'm so used to looking at boards. <laughs> it's like a big fish bucket. So the key to fighting these fish trolling is just slow, even reeling. We don't want to pump that rod at all. I just want to let that fish fight. It's not a big one, but it's still decent. Four or five pound fish here. Let the rod do all the work. Slimy. About an average Lake Erie walleye right now. Right kind of fish, I think. It's got the right head shake. See, the really nice thing about these rods is they really withstand those big head shakes. They got enough backbone to drive those hooks in, but it's a fast enough tip where you're not ripping the hooks out at, at higher speeds. You know, these summer speeds, you know, when I was on Lake of the Woods, when I first fell in love with this rod, I was trolling at two and a half, three mile an hour, and right now we're trolling at two, 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 three. And you wanna be able to get those hooks into these fish, but you don't wanna rip these hooks out. So you gotta be really careful and have a rod that's not going to rip it out at high speeds and it's gonna withstand the shock of those hook sets. Cause these hook sets are violent. I mean, you saw that rod, it darn near folded in half. And that's kind of what we're dealing with right now. You got 40 feet. And a lot of times with these, yeah. <laughs> with bear paws a lot of times these uh, I don't think it's a species but hoping it's a walleye and not a barnyard animal it's kind of staying down but it's also doing the sheephead shuffle 
Ah, big barnyard animal. Big barnyard. Take care. So one thing when fishing, anytime especially trolling uh, is one great example, boat control is huge for me. Uh, you know, whether or not you're making the right pass, you're going on the right angle, you're going against the current with the wind, it's all super important. Speed is very, very important too. So one, one uh, way that I like to uh, really dial that in and, and get total boat control is I like to pair my trolling motor with my kicker motor. You know, a lot of people will troll just one or the other. And how I like to do it is I like to use my kicker for power. So I have that running at a certain speed. And then my trolling motor I have on my iPilot with my remote. I can stand in the back and I can adjust it, spin it from the front because the angle um, that you're trying to move at, it's a better um, angle for moving the boat. You know, if you're trying to move it from the back kicker, it's a slower response, slower turn. You know, a lot of times if I'm following, like right now, we're following a brake line, a uh, pretty steep brake line. You're trying to stay in a certain depth. You got to take a bunch of micro adjustments and really keep it going, um, you know, straight in the angle that you want to go at going you know a lot of times where it's difficult is you know if I'm following a break and the wind might not be perfect for that break I have to utilize my trolling motor keep myself cutting through it and really be able to push through it you know so it's it's a lot of you know a lot of a lot of different variables when you're trolling but you know when you use your trolling motor a lot of times the, the um, key is to use it for steering I like to use it for steering and to dial in my speed if I need to go you know a tenth of a mile faster or a tenth of a mile slower I'll lower my speed or my power on my trolling motor if I need to go about a half mile faster I'll, I'll adjust with my kicker so there's a lot of different ways to dial it in but that's one great way that I found that works really well right on that S turn right on the outside turn so basically when you're doing these S turns especially on these flat calm days what what that tells you right there that was on the outside of the turn so the boards and the baits on this side of the boat are going faster than what your boat speed is normal so what that tells you is you're getting reactionary strikes those fish want you to speed up if the inside of the s-turn would have went off that means you want to slow down so a lot of times you can utilize these s-turns um, to really have the fish tell you what they want it's actually a really really nice good little taco buddy i know right that's a good fish to end the day on right there but yeah, basically with these S-turns, all it's doing is it's telling you what these fish want and what you need to do to adjust to get uh, trigger those fish. I mean, it, it's a very, very good technique for telling you what you need to do, and it's a good way to catch a lot of fish. Hey guys, this is Max Wilson with Lakewood Products. I want to talk to you guys about one of my favorite cases in the boat and how I utilize it. The pedestal organizer is awesome. It's designed to go underneath your front pedestal, keep your baits in there, all your terminal tackle, all your pliers, everything you may need. Um, how I set my boat up, I have two organizers in my boat actually for a few different reasons. I have one in the front of the boat and I like to put my jigging, jigging wraps, shiver minnows, everything I may need in there, extra line, in the side pockets, I like to put pliers, everything I need when I'm at the front of the boat, jigging, doing whatever I need. But one of the really cool options that we have on this pedestal organizer is you can actually fit offshore planter boards in the side pockets. That's actually what it's designed for. So not only do I have line and everything up front, it's perfect for fitting everything, but it's also designed to fit an offshore planter board and everything I need in the back. So how I set it up for trolling, that's what we're doing out here on Lake Erie is trolling. You know, you keep the boards right here, it's centrally located. Your boards aren't bouncing around. They're not getting scuffed. They're not scuffing up your floor, scuffing up the fiberglass on the inside of the boat. So they're in here and they actually hold up really well in the way they don't bounce out or anything it's a snug fit to hold it in there I also have my pliers my scissors my cutters my tuners everything I need right there and the one really cool thing with these pedestal organizers it actually has what we call our lure saving technology now most uh, cases have a straight vertical up and down hook slot with this we have an angled hook, hook slot so when you're running through the waves and you're bouncing your baits aren't falling out so you can actually when you're trolling and you're done for the day or you have a lure that you may want to try up next or whatever you may need you can put it in there I had, a, I had a scissors in there that Mr. Jake Hammer put in there. 
but you can actually fit your baits in there, let it dry off. Once you're done using it, you can fit in there. Um, and you can hang up your next baits up so you don't have to go digging through your boxes, stuff like that. You can have it all centrally located right there. I also like to keep my, my scents. Uh, I keep like to put a nice scent on there, uh, attract those fish. You know, you can put everything all in one little box. So when you need it, it's right here. It's out of the way. It's not in the way of any uh, any live wells or anything. You're not tripping over it. And you have a nice, I like to put a little pedestal. You can get bars that you can put in the back of your boats if you have the back pedestal option. But I like to have a pedestal so I can sit on it while I'm trolling. I can jig out of the back. I can do everything and it's centrally located. So check out the pedestal organizer. Follow us on Facebook. Instagram and YouTube at Lakewood Products.